uh, but right now we want to go to Washington, D.C., and we've got our senator, our junior senator on the line, and Senator Tom Cotton joins us. Senator, first of all, congratulations. This is a great piece of legislation from yesterday, this RAISE Act. I can't tell you how long I have been personally waiting for people to get serious about immigration, not just illegal immigration, but immigration in general. Well, thank you, Dave. I appreciate those kind words. And I hear that from Arkansans all across our state. Um, Arkansans believe in immigration. They know that we're a nation of immigrants, but we're also a nation of laws. And our immigration laws are simply not helping us uh, right now because we have too many unskilled and low-skilled workers coming into our country at a time when people who work with their hands and work on their feet haven't seen a pay raise in 40 years. So our, our bill would reorient our legal immigration system the system by which we give out green cards, which is the, the final step for citizenship, the most precious thing a foreigner can receive from our country, to those who are highly skilled and highly educated and who are not going to put downward pressure on blue-collar wages and who will probably not just support themselves and their families but create new jobs for American workers. Well, we, we had a long conversation yesterday with Rob Law from FAIR, and we understand that he worked uh, with you and, and uh, Senator Purdue on this particular piece of legislation somewhat, and uh, he gave us kind of an overview of it. But I'd like you to talk a little bit about why you want to move to merit-based uh, immigration instead of this whole family-based or chain-based immigration. Well, Dave, we've consulted very widely in this process with outside experts um, and the White House, with cabinet departments, with foreigners uh, from Canada and Australia who have designed their systems on which our new proposal is, mod is modeled. They very simply, our immigration system doesn't serve the interests of American workers, and that should be the test of our immigration laws. Is it good for Americans? We know that most foreigners would like to come to the United States, but the question we should be asking about them is, is it good for Americans? And it simply is not serving the interest of working or Kansans. For 40 years, my entire lifetime, if you have a high school degree or less, your wages have declined, your standards of living have declined. I hear that all across the state. That's in part because we have had an uncontrolled mass wave of migration for the last 40 years. We are at record levels of foreign-born residents in our country. That's more than quadrupled since the 1970s. And of the million people we admit every year, a million people we admit with a green card every year, only one out of 15 comes here for an employment-based reason. The vast majority come here because one of their relatives happened to get here earlier, or they're a refugee, or they just won a random lottery. That has to change. We have to focus our immigration system on ultra-high-skilled, talented individuals who can support themselves and contribute to this economy at a time, and also keep this mass migration of unskilled and low-skilled workers from driving down the wages of working class or Kansas. Yeah, it's not, you know, the whole thing of how much money you make in a, you know, a low-skilled job is not, shouldn't be controlled by Congress. The Democrats want to control it by making minimum wage $15, which is just insane. But the bottom line is if the jobs are there, these people will do those jobs so that they can make a living. So explain to the listeners with the, about the, the the RAISE Act here, about how how this merit-based system would work. Well, Dave, I think that's a very important point. You often hear from advocates for open borders and amnesty and mass migration in Washington, oh, Americans won't do that job. That is a lie, Dave. That is an insulting, condescending lie to the work ethic of Americans who hold every job in our economy. There is not a single job, not a single job in America – in which Americans are not the predominant source of workers. Not roofing, not construction, not agriculture, not child care, not landscaping, not nothing. So recognizing that Americans will do any job if they're paid a decent wage, we're trying to stop the unfair competition that working class Americans have faced for decades from unskilled and low-skilled immigrants. How do we do that? We reorient our legal immigration system to those who can speak better English or have higher levels of education in science, math, engineering, and other technical fields, who are, are younger and have an entire life of work ahead of them, who have a job offer that is 
multiple several multiples of the local average wage in any local economy. Uh, some others who have exceptional talents or achievements, like winning a Nobel Prize or Olympic medal or so forth. Simultaneously, we say you can no longer bring your entire family into the United States if you immigrate here. You can, of course, continue to bring your spouse and your unmarried minor children. But we can no longer allow unlimited family uh, uh, chain migration. Mm-hmm. Also, we cap the refugee program at 50,000 people per year. That's still very high, in my opinion. But it is in keeping with the Bush-Obama-era average until Barack Obama more than doubled it at the end of his term. And third, we eliminate the diversity lottery, which is as silly as it sounds. It serves no humanitarian or economic purpose. In fact, it doesn't really even serve the diversity that it claims to serve because Europeans are some of the fastest-growing beneficiaries of it. You know, Senator, quickly, let me just ask this question. If you want to take it down within a, de- a decade from a million to a half a million. Would that go down even further if we found that we need to curtail Im- immigration even more so so that Americans have a better chance at a job? So, Dave, the, the number of immigrants that would be coming in uh, a year after this bill's passed, 10 years after this pass, is derivative. It's a byproduct of the policies that I think most Arkansans support. Most Arkansans want to see spouses and unmarried minor, minor children be re- reunified. Uh, most of them think that we should have some kind of refugee program, but it shouldn't be solely in the president's discretion of how many refugees we take here. Most of them think that we should reorient our legal immigration system towards high-skilled individuals who have high levels of educational attainment, who can speak English, who have good job offers already. When you get those policies right, that's what produces the numbers, and that, that's what uh, develops the numbers that you just mentioned. Of course, Congress can always impose new caps. It can alter old caps. But what's, to me, what's most important is the policies. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I really like what you and Senator Purdue have done. This is, you know, this will be the first change to the immigration policy of this country since 1965. Do you understand it's been that long, Senator? Yeah. Yeah, so, Dave, I mean, some people, especially some critics in the media and on the left, um, believe that the story of immigration in this country is just one unending increase in immigration. And that is simply not the case. Mm -hmm. The story of immigration in our country is a story of surges and pauses. We had a large number of mostly Irish immigrants in the 19th century um, when we really didn't have immigration laws. As long as you didn't have a communicable disease and could support yourself, you got to the United States, you could stay here. And that was probably appropriate in the 19th century when we needed to populate an entire continent. Then in the late 19th, early 20th century, we had surges of Eastern and Southern European migration, which was largely stopped by the 1924 immigration law. And it stayed that way for 40 years. And then the 1965 law has created the third big wave of immigration in our history. Uh, And after 52 years, it's time to take stock of whether our economy needs a million new uh, immigrants, mostly unskilled and low-skilled, every single year. I contend they don't. Most Arkansans, agree, most Arkansans agree with me, and most Arkansans are right. I got you just for a few more moments. Let me ask a, about a question about a Fox News story. You keep up on things that are going on in the military. Uh, you keep up with foreign policy. Your, your thoughts about uh, what you all passed about Russia and uh, the different uh, things that you did with them and how the president responded to it? Well, it's it's important that most Arkansans know that Russia is not our friend, uh, and Vladimir Putin does not have Americans' best interests at heart. Um, I have long advocated for taking a firmer line towards Russia. The tenseness that we see in U.S.-Russian relations right now lays squarely at the feet of Vladimir Putin. He's the one that invaded our partners. He's the one that hacked into those emails and released them. He's the one who kicked down all of our diplomats, who, whose security goons attack our diplomats, as happened last summer. He's the one who provided missiles that were used to shoot a civilian aircraft out of the sky a couple of years ago in mm-hmm. Europe. So he bears sole responsibility for the state of our relationship. Now, that said, Barack Obama enabled Vladimir Putin for eight years and encouraged him to think that he could get away with these kinds of things by not taking a firmer line with Putin. Um, And he he was largely right about that. He did get away with most of those things. Uh, That's why it was important to impose these new sanctions on Russia, just as it's important to impose sanctions on Iran and North Korea, as that legislation also did. 
So last question, uh, there's a program that the Pentagon has, the MAVNI program. Uh, it's come under, you know, close scrutiny about people from other countries that are going into our military, uh, good people who have done good jobs as far as linguists and things of that nature. But there's some worries that maybe some some uh, bad actors are getting in there. Your thoughts on that? David, I think you're talking about the special immigrant visa program that yes, we sir. have for mostly Afghans and Iraqis who served with us. Yes. Um, I, I've supported that program. I, I know people who served with me and my units in Iraq and Afghanistan uh, who have come to the country or still aspire to come to our country. I think it's important for our security that we you know, take care of the people who risk their lives to defend us not primarily as a humanitarian gesture to them, though it is that, but for our own uh, cooperative needs in the future. If people around the world think that America will not help those people who help them most, then we're not going to get the help that we need. Of course, Dave, you're right that we have to do very careful and thorough vetting. That's made easier by the fact that these people already went through previous vetting and were considered safe, uh, safe enough to ride along in my own personal Humvee in Iraq or Afghanistan. But that will have to be refreshed before they can come to our country. All right. I uh, appreciate you. I, I wanted to, you to know, Senator, I really appreciate that you, you voted for the repeal of Obamacare. You voted, you voted for every which way you could to kill Obamacare. By the way, I, I, do you think you're going to be on the governor's Christmas card list? I mean, he's, <laughs> he's kind of wanting to keep Obamacare around. I, I, uh, I very much appreciate Governor Hutchinson's constructive uh, approach with me and John Bozeman as the Senate went through this process. Uh, I, obviously, a lot of senators didn't have that with their with their governor um, in Ohio and Nevada, for instance. So I, I greatly appreciate Governor Hutchinson's constructive approach. And he's still working uh, with the administration and working with Senator Bozeman and me to try to crack this nut. Uh, he was in Washington earlier this week to meet with the president. I'm open-minded about other uh, paths to trying to stop a lot of the harms that Obamacare has caused. I can't say that we're going to return to it in the short term, um, but ultimately, sooner or later, we will return to it because too many Arkansans are facing too much hardship because of Obamacare. And health care uh, in general is too much on the minds of Arkansas families for it not to come back. Well, we appreciate you, Senator. Keep up the good work. When are you going to be back in town? Thank you, Dave. We'll talk Next to you week, later. We- I think we just just look like we adjourned for the month. All right. Congratulations. All right. We'll see you later then. You, Bye-bye now. All right. All right. That is Senator Tom Cotton, of course, joining us for a few moments. Covered a lot of area in that few moments, though.